Dirali has some limitations. However, if you look at system as a regular hybrid, it's pretty, pretty good because it got roughly 60% uh, fuel economy improvement on this vehicle. As I mentioned that, the Ford um, hybrid design adopts the same design um, methodology that Toyota used. Even Nissan hybrid also use similar topology in their Nissan Altima design. In this design, uh, so I won't spend too much time on this one, but you can see that the front wheel is driven by uh, through reduction gear to electrical machine and then planetary gear. So the planetary gear, ring gear is connected to the final drive. The electrical machine is sitting on the same shaft as the ring gear sits. The engine is connected to the carrier and the sun gear is connected to the generator. The generator is also 28 kilowatts. The motor, however, is 70 kilowatts. The battery is 330 volts nickel metal hydride battery. Yeah. And uh, the motor is 70 kilowatts for this SUV, so it got a decent acceleration even without starting the engine. This one, I would say, it qualifies for blended PHEV. A next example uh, is um, series hybrid. The series hybrid, this one is by ISE Corporation. And they designed this series hybrid for an electrical bus. On this series hybrid, the engine uh, can be a diesel or gasoline engine. The fuel can be gasoline or diesel, depending on the engine type. The engine is driving a generator. In this case, this generator produces 400 volts AC. And that AC goes to, if you look at the middle part, is the power electronics. Well, the engine, the motor one, motor two, and auxiliary power electronics. So each of these power electronic unit controls each of the actual drive com driving components. So the GN controls the generator. Mode one uh, controls M1, mode two controls mode two. And then all of these are connected to a common DC bus. The energy storage, which is the battery, also connect to the DC bus. So everything runs off the DC bus where you see the little cross, uh, that's, that's the DC bus. If you see um, towards the, the left, you can see the two electrical motors. The two electrical motors are rated at 400 volts AC, so they are induction machines in this particular design. The two electrical machines are connected to a common gearbox. Therefore, these two electrical motors uh, just are used to increase the driving power of the vehicle system. Then uh, one of the reasons apparently is the two motors are readily available uh, from a vendor. So therefore, you find these two motors, put, put them together with the common gearbox, you form this hybrid driving system. If you can find a one motor that is rated at the power that you need, it's okay. If you look towards the left of the diagram, below the energy storage, you're gonna see two braking resistors. Those two braking resistors is for braking uh, the vehicle. So what happens in a bus? The, at the times, the braking power could be huge. So below the energy storage, you see two braking resistors. Those are going to help in regenerative braking. The reason is these two motors may produce enough gen uh, negative torque to slow down the vehicle. But the power from the two motors may not be able absorbed by the energy storage system. So energy storage system has a certain rate that it can, um, it can absorb energy. So if the energy storage system is not uh, big enough to absorb all the energy, you can consume that energy in a braking resistor. So rather than burn them in a traditional hydraulic brake. The LUX power electronics actually controlling the air conditioning, uh, the motor, uh, the power steering, the air compressor. Why air compressor? Now we know you need air, uh, air conditioning, but the air compressor is that in a vehicle system, whether it's a hybrid or conventional vehicle, the, we have a lot of hydraulic systems. Just the traditional um, hydraulic braking, um, the power assisted steering, and so on. So those are run out of hydraulic. Those hydraulic need some pressure coming from somewhere. So traditionally you have the engine driving pump to build up the pressure you need. But in a hybrid, since there's no such engine, uh, engine I mean, there is an engine, but the engine is not running all the time. So if the engine stopped, your, your uh, pressure may be low. 
if the pressure is low in your system, what are you going to do? How can you run, run the hydraulic system? So therefore, in most of the hybrids you see, there is auxiliary pump. That is driven by an electrical motor, and the motor runs on a high voltage battery to build up the pressure, the hydraulic pressure in your vehicle system. So whenever you need to brake or uh, power assisted steering and so on, you're going to have the pressure available. So that's why they have an air compressor in this system as well. So that's your series hybrid. And apparently those hybrid, some of those hybrids have been built and used in some areas, in particular uh, in the past number of years, like a GM a subsidiary Allison has built a number of different uh, series buses and trucks. When we talk about trucks and buses, delivery trucks is one of the most um, capable, uh, suitable area to be uh, elect electrified. For example, Eaton Corporation worked with some uh, team members to build a FedEx delivery truck. And that does not have to be limited to FedEx, can be any delivery truck. But this truck is a very typical parallel hybrid. You can see that it's a real wheel driving system, it's a diesel hybrid. And through reduction gear, there's a six speed automatic transmission. Between the automatic transmission and the engine, there is a 44 kilowatts electrical motor. And then the motor is run, controlled by inverter, and the inverter is connected to a battery. And this battery I'm showing here is a lithium ion battery. In fact, they are uh, using most, uh, mostly nickel metal hydride batteries. And between engine and electric motor, there's auto clutch. So that you can turn, uh, the in you can disconnect the engine from the system if you don't need the engine, if the engine is idle. So in that case, you are not wasting energy by idling uh, the engine operate uh, or freewheel the engine flywheel. So in this system, as we said, it is a parallel hybrid. The auto clutch can disconnect the engine. And when the engine is connected, the motor would drive the vehicle by taking power from the battery. But when the vehicle is at a high speed or at certain accelerations, the engine will be turned on and the auto clutch is linked. So you have engine and the motor to drive the vehicle all together. When braking, the auto clutch is really disconnected to increase the capability of capturing regenerative braking energy. And the rear wheel is driving the electrical motor. The electrical motor becomes the generator to charge the battery. One of the things, since we talk about regenerative braking, I want to mention that if it's a two-wheel driving system instead of four-wheel driving system, the best way to capture energy is run the braking, uh, regenerative braking. However, since it's only two-wheel drive, the regenerative braking can only generate torque on the two driving wheels. On other passive wheels, there's no braking torque. In order to balance the vehicle braking, you usually have to use the hydraulic braking on the other two wheels. In particular, if you want to do ABS, things like that, then you have to switch um, regenerative braking to uh, traditional hydraulic braking. Also, if your braking is coming out to be uh, too much demand, in that case, you, all, you will also have to switch into a hydraulic braking. But normally, that braking is coordinated. Like later on, we will have that concept called series braking, which means you're going to apply regenerative braking. Then if it's not enough, you apply hydraulic braking. Sometimes it's called a sequential braking. Uh, what it means is the same thing. You brake the vehicle with regenerative braking. If the regenerative braking is not sufficient, you're going to use the hydraulic braking. To balance the vehicle, such as anti-lock braking and vehicle stability control, you can also need the hydraulic braking in place at any given time when it is needed. So therefore, there's also a concept called coordinated braking. In that coordinated braking uh, system, you do the similar thing. You basically want to uh, maximize the regenerative braking, but in the meantime, you don't want to lose the braking um, performance of the vehicle. So therefore, you want to combine uh, hydraulic, you want to coordinate hy hydraulic braking and regenerative braking. This uh, one example is the last example before we break, is a Toyota Camry uh, hybrid system. The Toyota Camry hybrid system is very similar to the previous, previous hybrid system. 
Oh, well, you can see this, the engine is now on the left, on the right. The engine is uh, connected to um, the carrier, also the carrier the f of the planetary gear, and the generator is connected to some gear. So on the right hand, you see the, the blue one is the generator. The purple one is the engine. So the engine is connected through the solid shaft to the carrier of the planetary gear on the right. Okay, and the blue one is the generator, it's connected to the sun gear. The, the yellow one is the ring gear. So the ring gear you can see is connected to outside, the gear is outside. And that outside gear is driving, the bottom is a, is a green one, is the final drive, goes to all the way to the final drive. If you look carefully inside the yellow gear, on the left there's another planetary gear. But that planetary gear, if you look carefully, the sun gear is connected to the, the red one, the red one is the motor. So the motor is connected to the sun gear of another planet gear. And the yellow gear, which is the uh, ring gear, is connected parallel with the ring gear of another planet gear. But if you look carefully, the planet gear, um, the planetary carrier on the left, that is grounded, which means the carrier of the second planet gear doesn't move, which means the planet gear to the left of the join is merely a speed reduction gear. So with this design, it is possible to use a high speed motor. So the motor can run up to 13,000 RPM, 15,000 RPM on in this design. But in the previous, the motor speed usually runs at a much lower, 1,500 to 2,000 RPM speed. So this design is capable of operating at very high motor speed but it gives you the same functionality as the previous hybrid. Okay, let's take a break.